Okay, uh, this is a 1958 Seth Thomas clock. I got it from a guy, I gave him 50 gallons of kerosene for it. It was not in working condition. This is the old motor. That's an electric motor, 115 volt. And I don't, it looks to be original. I think it's original. Anyhow, I bought a replacement motor from a place in Phoenix called Time Savers. And this is an exact replacement motor. It doesn't have the cover. That one has a cover. This one doesn't. And I've just hooked it up. I did a little bit of solder job and then encased the wires and shrink wrap. Put it in there. It's a little tough doing that. You know, getting those screws and stuff in there. It's real, real delicate work. You have to have a real steady hand to do it. But before I put the thing back together, I want to test it. Make sure the motor runs. So let's do this. There's the motor. Let's see. Okay. Hard to do it myself. But okay. There we go. Okay, plugged in. There she goes. All right. So this clock's working. That motor's running. I must have done something right. We got it mounted in there. The gears are working. I see the movements working. Now I'm going to reinstall it. See if the chimes, if I get the chimes to work. Setting the chimes up on these kind of clocks can be a little bit tricky because they have a mounting base here and actually the chimes are in here. That's the chime assembly. And you have the, the service ports reposition it or down here. And again, this is a 1953 Seth Thomas General Time Corporation in Thomaston, Connecticut. Okay. Anyhow, uh, it took me about three weeks to get the uh, motor. They're a specialty item, so it came uh, actually came yesterday, and today's Saturday, and I wanted to see if I could get this thing going. And I'm and I'm going to refinish the case, so it'll end up being a mantle clock. Okay, here we go.